I was a musician at the time, and also practiced martial arts. I couldn't find a place to train in, so I started a group of my own. After a while, we found we needed a permanent training site, and that's when I opened the basement. I had never seen any other martial arts or had any interest in studying martial arts when I first started. I was impressed with Wong Sun Leong, my teacher. I met him by chance. I liked the person, I liked the guy, I liked the man. I took up training at his place without realizing that other martial arts were practiced differently. I just presumed anyone practicing martial arts did it the way I did. This is the first form. It's called Siu Lin Tao, which can be translated as initial programming, initiation, indoctrination. It's divided into three parts. The first is slow, as you can see now. It can be meditative. Wing Chun comes from the Shaolin Temple, where a lot of Chinese martial arts is originated. Ngui, one of the nuns from the Shaolin Temple, is supposed to have started this system after the second and successful attempt at burning it down. She taught a young girl called Yu Wing Chun, a form of self-defense. Some people say that Wing Chun was derived from someone watching a fight between a snake and a crane. Others have different versions. I don't have any in particular, seeing I learned it in the 20th century in Hong Kong from a very modern person. I decided to have a modern attitude that the system's history is history, and good to know. But the system itself is what is important. The whole idea of practicing this form is to ignore whatever is happening around you. As you can see, people are coming in constantly. Your body can go through certain motions without interfering with your awareness of the surroundings. This is Yip Man. He's the heir of Wing Chun. The man who brought Wing Chun out of the closet. He died in 1971. He's supposed to have taught Bruce Lee and my teacher Wong Sun Leung, amongst a lot of other practitioners. They, like myself, have moved from Hong Kong to different parts of the world, and we all practice Wing Chun in our own way. It was my own finding when I came to England that everyone else was doing it wrong, and I was the only one that was right. It was later that I discovered that we all have our own way of doing it. It's time we started looking at the way everyone practices and started learning from everyone's experience. This form, when being performed, sometimes takes up to an hour to complete, but we've cut it short. When going through ceiling tell, you basically go through all the movements in the entire system. It's taught to you at the beginning, but recently I've discovered that it used to be taught at the end. It takes quite a while to get to like Siling Tao, but once you get to like it, it becomes quite a pleasure to go through it. This is probably unique in terms of martial arts training. I have never seen another martial art practiced in this way. For someone who is a non-practitioner, this may seem quite strange, but I find that some of these techniques are applicable even in boxing. Here we see two people doing a single hand drill called Tan Sao Si. It teaches the hands to do one drill at a time. When you get more experience, you get both hands working, each one doing a different drill simultaneously. Here we go. 
This is a classic example of two hands doing different drills at the same time. Very good for coordination, a bit like juggling. You're encouraged to talk to each other at the same time. This helps with the progression of the so-called automatic pilot and multiple awareness. you will be taught the second form, which is the set of movements being performed at the moment. Before you are shown the second form, you have to be able to coordinate your motions. For example, two hand motions. It's very linear, and at this stage, very static compared to other martial arts. Some people say Wing Chun used to be practiced on sampans, you know, the boats on the rivers. Because of limited space, all the forms, all the training had to be done in a limited area. The kicks were executed with the heel, that being the hardest part of the foot. The center of gravity is kept over the back foot. After learning the second form, you continue doing some more training until about the two and a half year mark, where you will start getting taught to work with the dummy. The dummy isn't just a hand hardening technique or equipment to smash into. It's a wonderful piece of technology. Dummies of various designs have been used by a lot of different martial arts, but in modern times the most noticeable user of this training tool was Richard. It wasn't until Bruce Lee made it apparent to the rest of the martial arts world that it became popular as it is today. There are 108 moves in the dummy. You get taught about 40 of them before the last form. The chronological order of teaching Wing Chun is the first form, Su Ling Tao, the second form, Chun Q, the third form, Pu Ji, then the wooden dummy, then the long pole, then the butterfly knives, Ba Chiam Do. It is said that there were 108 dummies in the Shaolin Temple, with one move for each dummy. In each of the forms in Wing Chun, it is said that there are 108 moves, that is, with both hands and weapon forms. But I haven't been able to count them all yet. Okay. Now I just want to remind you guys a few things. Thank you so much. We all know, we all know that we want to draw our punches. Horizontally. We all know that, okay? But we also know that if you look at it from the top, where this is the head, and that's the hand you punch out like this. Okay, so you put using your forearm as an attacking rather than a defensive. So you att attack and defend simultaneously. Now, let's bring it a little further. Okay, we take a concept from both Fuji and Changju. Fuji and Changju, where you bring your hands in from the outside. So we have a guy standing over here with his head, and his arms is out this way. Let's shorten his arms a little bit. This is his hand to his elbow. That's a line of attack coming from here, or here, or here. It doesn't matter where the line of attack from. What we've got to remember is what my Sifu says, the nearest line to the attack is not the actual hand. See, the Chinese say, Dai Zhang, so you bring your elbow, which is nearest. I mean, if my hand is out here, and there's a line of attack, the nearest part of my hand that I can use is, in fact, the elbow. But by throwing the elbow in, I actually travel a, a shorter distance than the actual hand. Like if I had to 
it's obvious for you to see which, which line is longer. So what happens is when you throw... I'm a non-trained teacher, so I teach line, pretty much intuitively. I have a few comedian heroes, so I try to inject some humor into, into my teaching. You bring the As I've found and in you bring that if you make someone laugh you. while you're teaching them, they'll find it easier and to when we focus take when it in. The diagrams come from my seafood. He loves producing diagrams and pictures while he teaches, and I find it helps. What do you bring down? When the foot comes out, get the foot down, right? So we've got that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, those, those, those are the basic ideas I want you guys to remember. So I want you to just preach yourself and uh, have a little play with each other. And I see what's going on, and I'll come in and disturb you as we go along, okay? Let's go and play. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John, that's pretty good. Can I grab one more person here? Okay, Noah, I want you guys to pay attention to this, okay? When we do a poxel, we usually set up the poxel and hit here. I want you to hit here and make sure that your elbow is touching this thing. You want to get this. Just to set up. So the drill is here, this. I want the partner to feel the strike coming from the elbow onto the forearm over here, as well as so you try simultaneously take this, okay? Classically, that's a pox cell, right? This attack over here and this hip over here. But I want this hand to touch this and the elbow to touch that simultaneously. Both of them are a strike. Okay, so boom. So you got this line. Boom, you got this line. So all you want to do is change over and let each other have a go. So Michael has a go, boom. Then you change over, he has a go again. Then it's my turn and I go. Then I turn around here and I go. You know, and then it's his turn. Boom, he goes. Then he, he goes again, see? And it's my turn. You, you try not to look at your hands when you're doing it, you know? Okay? So, so let yourself go. Go. That's it. That's it. Okay? Any questions? All right, let's try just that drill. So you can play your bop, move a bump, and set it up. Play bop, set it up, set it up. Okay? Just the pop out, including your elbow. This is very important to have this, because a lot of us will do the pop out and leave that open. Okay, let's try. Okay, this will be the bread piece. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, that's good, that's good. Let's take another one. The same drill, right? If I go over here, I have this, this is fine. What happens if I get this and this hands over here? So he reaches. I have to turn. Right. So, I go here, and I turn. In other words, if I set this one up here to come here, I go there, I turn. Now, sometimes, if I go there, that energy is coming towards me, so I have to take it that way. Right? So this is basically working on the dummy. When you're going on the dummy, you go, you go on this side. You go over here, you go over there. Right? So when I set this up here, I have to let it go that way, go this way, just like I demonstrated on the dummy. Now, if I hit it and I overshoot it, I'm up high, I have a chance to control and go for this lower line. What we have to look out when we go over to the lower line is the leg. Because from this kind of a position over here, you can get knees. So you cover the knee. If I attack Michael's groin, then he'll attack my groin at the same time. We both end up with sore balls. So what happens over here, we come around, we, boom, we take this line, and I check his legs, okay? So if we get this here, that's the other line. Are you guys all with me? So the option for us in this situation, when you execute the pop, if you happen to overshoot the mark, you can down it, go down this way. If you don't overshoot the mark, you can't control that way. It's too great. Come in that way, move your head out of the way, slap him, check his knee. All right, a lot of people get ambitious and try and attack, leaving themselves open for the attack, for the counterattack. So what you want to do, play safe, be a coward, come in here and stay close. All right, let's try it. See, okay, and your danger over here is that when you move here like this, this is not going to happen. Once you move these up, you have to try and put the sensor in the sensor. You got it.
These people aren't really students, but yes, they are students. They learn from me, but they're more like friends. We keep a family structure, which is what the traditional sense of teaching Kung Fu is. All the guys in the basement are aware of this. Although it was originally a form invented by women, nowadays very few women practice, mostly men. I'm always encouraging ladies to take part. It's quite a lot of fun. I encourage enjoyment. I think having fun helps you get better without realizing it. And if you're not having fun, then it becomes a hassle, hard work. And it's really not worth it. Okay, guys, it's on.